Hey guys, Jack here and today plenty more BF1 news and info, bit of a mixed bag this one but we've got a lot to cover so I'll get stuck right in. First things first, Gamescom next week, we'll get to see a massive dose of new Battlefield 1 content and this was confirmed in a recent news post up on the Battlefield.com website that reveals some details so there's going to be a new trailer for the game, that's a given but also another squad's live stream. On Twitter just now Battlefield released a very short teaser trailer, let's take a look Horses, planes, bombs, flamethrower dude, swords, oh my god, it's got it all, the hype is real. And the full trailer will be released tomorrow apparently, so expect a full breakdown of that on the channel. Now if you remember back at EA Play, they had a big live stream with YouTubers, celebs, Snoop Dogg, Smoking Weed, showing off the gameplay on Quentin Scarf for the first time. There'll be a similar live stream event from Gamescom next week, Tuesday, August 16th at 12pm Pacific Time, which is 9pm CEST, that's generally European time. A new Battlefield Squad's live stream will show off a new map going on a destructive adventure into the desert to showcase the new map, filled with points to capture, horses to ride, nay, and things to demolish. So it's likely that the new map is going to be set in the Wadi Rum in Jordan. That's the desert map we've seen a few times in the trailers with the armoured train and the, the horse riding. And it's famous for the Wadi Rum train attack during the Arab Revolt of 1916. We're going to see horses, armoured trains, teased further in the post of course with a train load of new information <laughs> I see what you did there it then goes on to say will anyone blow up a tank from horseback perhaps insinuating that if you're on a horse you have anti-tank weaponry as an option that sounds incredibly cool riding past a tank at full speed sticking a bomb to its tracks and watching it blow up over your shoulder as you gallop into the sunset so very exciting times next week I'll be offering up all of the coverage I can of the new content too We've also got more info on the new operations game mode which I haven't covered on this channel before. In it the outcome of the current round continues over to the next map giving you the opportunity to fight a sequence of interconnected battles. It looks like whether you win or lose here will have an impact on where the server goes to next. Help me. And from the Battlefield website it reads this. Operations offer epic journeys across several maps based upon real battles of World War 1. We wanted to offer a large and epic experience with a focus on team play and frontline combat. Adding this meta layer to the game and stretching it across multiple interesting locations that both look and play very differently adds a whole new layer of scale and variety to the battles of BF1. Your team can win on one map, proceed to the next map and actually see the map you previously fought over on the horizon. As an attacker you'll hear the commanding officer's whistle as the order to charge the enemy trench is given. You'll run side by side with your teammates as you storm towards the enemy defensive positions on foot, in tanks, airplanes, boats and on horseback. As a defender you'll dig down as you hear the alarm go off signalling an incoming attack and you'll man the stationary machine guns and cannons to aid you as you rain hell on the advancing enemy attackers. The attackers must capture and hold all defensive positions in order to capture the section that's being fought over. Once once this is done the defenders will fall back to the next sector and regroup. The pacing and variety between the different sectors vary widely since each sector offers a different amount of objectives to capture and defend as well as varied layouts and choke points so maybe multiple objectives there like capture points, MCOM stations, something like that. The attackers must take territory and push the front line forward while the defenders are trying to hold the line. Should the defenders fail to hold their ground on a map, the operation doesn't stop there. They'll fall back and regroup on a different map while the attackers will continue to push. Sectors may fall but players are reinforced by gigantic behemoths that can still turn the tide. So it could be a similar system to Conquest. If one team is losing over and over again, they might get a behemoth to come in. So either a airship, an armoured train or a dreadnought. We wanted to create a battlefield experience that was not just bite sized but actually spanned beyond an hour of playtime, something epic and compelling for players who wanted a chance to immerse themselves in the first global war. And then go ahead and capture the stories of how different battles were deeply connected to one another. This kind of frontline combat really captures the essence of World War 1 clashes, intimate and deeply rooted in breaking through or holding ground. Very interesting this, so it looks like the operations game mode is kind of like a progressive, almost story mode in multiplayer I suppose, where one team attacks and the other team defends. Kind of sounds like turning point at times from Battlefront, but on a much 
grander scale maybe with multiple objectives because you've got bigger maps more players more vehicles etc just with a bit of narrative in the multiplayer to tie it all together interesting that they mentioned boats there too we've not seen any gameplay footage of that yet but there were a few images of attack boats in the concept art Another interesting snippet from the website that popped up before we move on. This comes from a small interview with Julian Schimek who works on weapons and gadgets in BF1. He's talking about weapon customization here. Our weapon customization will allow you to use four different zoom levels with each weapon. Previous titles locked you into a specific magnification with a specific sight and there was a lack of options between close and medium range magnifications. So does that mean we'll get four levels of zoom with every weapon? I assume he's not talking about sidearms there, rather the primary like the rifles, LMGs, snipers, etc. But does that include SMGs too? I think it'd be kind of weird to have four different zoom levels on an SMG, but that's just my two cents. But at least this means that you can customize your sights in BF1 a bit more than I'd say we were all expecting. Moving on, let's talk about premium. Still no official word if Battlefield 1 premium is going to be a thing. For BF4, premium was announced on the 20th of August 2013, a couple of months before release. So it stands to reason that we may get some sort of premium announcement or trailer at Gamescom next week. And also, apparently a placeholder image was found in the BF1 alpha game files that suggested premium would be a thing. However, we've literally heard nothing about it officially yet, and if we look at the pre-order bonuses for the game, it paints an interesting picture. The two normal versions of the game you can pre-order are the early enlisted deluxe edition and the standard edition. You can also get a collector's edition that comes with a statue, but that's another thing. The standard edition gets you the game, but also the pre-order bonuses of the Hellfighter pack, which is an M1911 pistol skin, I think, a Harlem Hellfighter's insignia, a Hellfighter trench shotgun and a hellfighter bolo knife but most importantly it gets you this seven days early access to a brand new free map that ea dice will release later in 2016 the deluxe version gets you everything from the standard pre-order version plus three days early access to the game five battle packs as well as the following red baron pack and in that you get the red baron's triplane the red baron's po8 pistol the Flyer Pin, the Lawrence of Arabia pack, the Lawrence of Arabia's Black Stallion, his SMLE rifle, his Jambaya knife and emblem. Also new visual appearances for the largest vehicles in the game which are Frontline Camouflage Train, Night Raid Airship and Dazzle Camouflage Dreadnought. And like I said the Collector's Edition you get everything that's in the previous two versions plus a statue of one of the soldiers from the game and some playing cards and like a little pigeon messenger thing. But basically, from the pre-order versions of the game, there's a load of extra bonuses, which by now I'd say is pretty normal for dice games. But the one that interests me the most is that free map, 7 days early access. I think we could be looking at a couple of different premium scenarios here. The first one and the most likely scenario is that dice are going to offer free maps every now and again, like they did with Star Wars Battlefront. Maps that are free for everyone, which is cool, maybe once every 2-3 to three months, let's guess. But also, I think we'll get premium on top of that as well, with bigger map packs that you have to pay for to access because realistically look at it from a business perspective bf1 has so much hype for it a premium service would sell like crazy there's no doubt about that bit of a long shot here but there is maybe a slight possibility that there might be no premium for bf1 and all maps will be free to play on and dice and ea will monetize the game in a plethora of other ways as is evident with their pre-order bonuses so stuff like skins customization emblems etc in an ideal world World, I think this is the best option for the game and the player base because it doesn't split the community up. If you own the game then you can play every new map that's released going forward. That would be the perfect scenario for me. I don't have a problem with microtransactions if they're cosmetic or they give you like more XP bonuses for example. Titanfall 2, Halo 5 and Rainbow Six Siege are operating now with similar models so why not BF1? It's a possibility and we can always hope I guess. And will there be a continuation of the Phantom program too or something similar to that? And if there is, will that be premium only again? Perhaps if you don't have to pay for map packs, maybe you'd have to pay for access to the Phantom Program stuff. I think the success and popularity of the Phantom Program proves that it should feature in Battlefield 1 behind the scenes and hidden away for those people that want to get involved with alternate reality games like that. 
it was really fun for me and a lot of other people and it's an experience that you can't really get in other games. Perhaps with the game being set in World War One, we might see the origins of the Phantom Program, its inception. That could be very interesting. Let me know your thoughts on that down below. And that's all for today folks. I hope you enjoyed the video as always. The pictures that have been on the screen in the corner, if you hadn't already guessed, were from people who bought one of my t-shirts and tweeted their pictures at me. Uh, thank you very much for that and if you saw yourself, make sure you comment down below. There will be another limited edition t-shirt design up for grabs in a month or so if you missed out on the first one. Thanks for watching guys, remember next Tuesday 16th, tune into the channel, tune into the live stream, there's going to be a load of new BF1 content up, it's going to be pretty exciting. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, a thumbs down if you didn't, and I'll see you in the next one. I'm fucked up, I'm black and blue.